question um, and hopefully our uh, stragglers will join us um, in the meantime. So the work session, this work session for the Board of Education for April 25th, 2022 is called to order. For today's meeting, um, we're not gonna be voting on anything at today's meeting. But the meeting will be streamed, uh, I'm sorry. This meeting is being streamed live on PPS TV services website and on channel 28 and will be replayed throughout the next two weeks. Please check the district website for replay times. And I'll ask um, that everybody please mute themselves uh, unless they're talking. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming together this morning in a work session with members of the Center for Black Student, uh, Black Excellence Steering Committee. We're happy to have um, you all join us today. As you know, in 2020, PPS and community stakeholders came together to propose a concept for the Center for Black Student Excellence um, to be included as part of the bond measure. There's undisputed need for investments in educational strategies and in physical infrastructure to ensure Black students within the district are able to meet their promise. While the Center for Black Student Excellence alone accomplished this, its inclusion in the bond represented an important catalyzing moment both as a model for how PPS and community stakeholders can partner to advance measures and for an increased level of coordination among the many community organizations serving black students. This morning, we'll hear from the Center for Black Student Excellence Steering Committee as proposed a proposed approach to collectively consider how we best move the community's vision forward. And to start us off, I think it'd be good to uh, begin with a quick round of introductions and um, I'll start with myself and then I'll call on the next uh, person that I can see on my screen. And I'll ask, um, I'll ask that everybody uh, just do a brief introduction and state your affiliation and then call on the next person. So my name is Michelle DePass and I'm uh, here representing the Portland Public School Board. I'll toss it to Danny Ledesma. You're the next person uh, on my screen. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Danny Ledesma. I'm with the district, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague who's here with me uh, in my office. Good morning, everyone. I'm Camille Idetovo, also with PPS, leading the Innovation Studio. Good morning. Um, I see Dan, so passing it to Dan. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dan Young. I'm Chief Operating Officer at Portland Public Schools. Uh, and I will pass it over to my colleague, Cheryl Proctor. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am uh, Dr. Cheryl Proctor. I am the deputy superintendent uh, for PPS over instruction and school communities. And I'll pass it on to our superintendent, um, Guadalupe. Buenos dias, everybody. Guadalupe Guerrero, superintendent, Portland Public Schools. Good to see all of you. Um, I think she's here with us. Rakaya, are you there? I am here. Gosh, she threw me off. My fingers were frozen. I'm so excited to be here, affiliated with Albina Vision Trust. I will pass it off to Colleen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kali Thornland. My pronouns are she, her hers, and um, I am with the Children's Institute, and I am um, co-chair of the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee, and I will pass it to Winta. Good morning, everyone. I'm Winta Johannes uh, with Albina Vision Trust and also the co-chair of the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee. I will pass it to Marsha. Good morning, everybody. Marsha Williams, member of the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee, and I'm with Kairos PDX. I will pass it to Renard. Good morning, everyone. I'm with PPS. I'm the Chief of Research Assessment and Accountability. I'm going to call on Director Green. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Herman Green. I'm with uh, PPS School Board, and I will pass it to Ms. Lydia Lopez. Gamboa. Thank you, Director Green. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lydia Lopez Gamboa, and I'm the project manager for the racial equity and social justice team. And I'll pass it on to my colleague, Tara Lynn. Thanks, Lydia. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Tara Lynn Wiley, and I am on the RESJ team with PPS as the partnerships manager. And I will pass it to Bahia. 
Hello, good morning. My name is Bahia Overton. I am a member of the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee, and I am the director of um, the Black Parent Initiative in Portland. And is there someone who should I pass it to? Mm. Who has it on? Thank you. There you go, <laughs> Tony. Tony Opson, President CEO of Self Enhancement Inc., and a part of the uh, committee as well. And I'm not sure who is left, but if you haven't introduced yourself, jump on in. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Jonathan Garcia, Chief of Staff here at PPS. Good to see everybody. I'll jump in. Julia Brum Edwards, uh, School Board, and also chaired the bond. Andrew Scott, also PPS School Board. I use he, him pronouns. Nice to see everybody. Elaine. Oops. I'll go. Uh, this Elaine Amy Harrison. What'd you say? You go ahead. Sorry about that. Okay. Elaine Harrison, Al Albana Head Start, part of the commi steering committee. All right. This is Amy Constam from the PPS board. Ailey Lowry from the PPS board. Shanice Clark, community engagement with PPS. Good morning, everyone. Liz Large. I'm the district's contracted general counsel. It's nice to see you all. Jackson Weinberg, student rep to the Board of Education. Dana, Go ahead. Assistant <laughs> to the board. Dana White, planning and real estate for the, the board. Or for the, I'm sorry, for the district <laughs> on the board. Roseanne Pell, board manager. Lockyer, I am PM for the Justice City Modernization and helping out on the location team. Joe McFerrin with uh, POIC in the Rosemary Anderson High School, a member of the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee. Gary Holland, board member. Is there one more person that is, uh, maybe it's Terry Proctor that hasn't introduced? Thank you. I think I've uh, counted 31 attendants uh, and, and I think we've got everybody. Uh, thank you for introducing yourselves. So I think I'd like to turn the floor over to Winta Johannes, Executive Director of Albina Vision Trust um, and our uh, PPS staff to kick us off. Winta. Thank you, Chair DePess. Um, I'll actually uh, give it to Kali to uh, give us the framing and outline the goals for today's work session. So Kali. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, great. So I am actually coming to you from David Douglas School District, which is right next door. And um, I was able to see, it's ironic because I just got done doing a tour and seeing what happens when community has a vision for building something beautiful and how it can serve children, families and community in meaningful ways. And that's part of why I'm here visiting the Earl Boyle site, uh, which is something CI has been involved with. But it's apropos to why we are here today, which is talking about the Center for Black Student Excellence and what we'd like to build for children in Portland Public Schools. And so I am reminded being here that when you have vision and when you have purpose and intentionality and investment, beautiful things can happen. Um, to ground us in why we're here. Uh, we started this conversation before the pandemic when we were looking at the moving uh, of Tubman Middle School. And I think there was a desire to do something bold. And unlike what had been done in the past, recognizing that we were coming, um, well, actually Black Lives Matter hadn't even happened at that point. The initial conversations, well, the, the, the rise of Black Lives Matter and the murder of George Floyd had not happened at that point. Black lives have always mattered. But um, I think 
think we, we recognize the need to do something innovative and intentional in the Albina community. And there was a desire to not just move a middle school, but to create a vision of something solid that could exist in the Albina community that could support Black student achievement. Fast forward, and we had the murder of George Floyd. And I think there was even more focus on how do we support Black children and families in Portland public schools, recognizing um, chronic uh, underinvestment and underachievement of those students. And so it brings us, I think, to where we are today, where we had historic bond investment in producing a center for Black student excellence that could not only ensure Black children all across the continuum from early childhood through high school could be successful, but that their families would have access to opportunities, that it would be research and um, the programs that are Black-led Black serving programs within our community could come together to support children um, in the educational space in Albina. And so we have a historic opportunity. And I know that we have been going back and forth about the mechanics, but I want everyone to be grounded in what the opportunity is right now, right here today. All of you as leaders and board members have an opportunity to leave this legacy for Black children that has never been led, left for Black children in Portland public schools. And so so it is exciting and the details do matter to set us up for success, but make no mistake that this historic investment has the potential to have generational impacts for Black children and families in Portland public schools and lays a marker in the historically Black community to say that children matter and their families matter, and this community matters of, of North Portland. So um, we are here today to talk about the governance structure and how we ensure that this is a process that not is that is not only led by school district leaders, which of course is important as stewards of the bond, but is also led by the community members, many of whom have been in the community multiple generations. Um, the people who, they didn't only go to school here, but their parents and their parents' parents did. And so we want to ensure that we set up a structure that includes the voices of our community in an authentic way um, from the very beginning, not later on to get input, but from the very beginning. And so I am hopeful uh, about what we can achieve. It is wonderful to see all of your faces here today. Um, and I'll turn it back over to Winta. Thank you, Kali. So building on the background that Kali has grounded us in, um, there are a few important uh, things I'd like to share with you before uh, we show the governance structure, which I know many of you have previewed with us. Um, in thinking about how to organize ourselves around this opportunity, a few things were clear to us. One was that we needed to build on the momentum of how the bond measure was created in 2020. And so seven of the largest Black-led and Black-serving education service providers uh, that you see represented here on this call came together to form the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee. Uh, there was an intentional uh, reason that we called it the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee, and that is that we knew the Center for Black Student Excellence is an important component part of the overall vision, but so was the integration of this overall vision for Albina with Tubman Jefferson modernization, the coordination of neighborhood schools, and um, the many community organizations that are represented here and exist in Albina. And so we came together to form a steering committee and thought about what kind of process would lend itself to the outcomes that we are all committed to. We knew that this process itself needed to support the fact that we are all partners, that we didn't want to be part of an engagement process where a box is checked, uh, but that we're actually drawing on the expertise of community partners and the resolve of school board members in the superintendent's office. And so keep that in mind for why uh, we are proposing a new entity as opposed to um, a committee or other types of structures. The other part of this is that we know that the 2020 bond measure is important and that there are a number of investments before the school district today that represent half a billion dollars worth of investments in Albina. So there's this need to coordinate those investments and make sure they're moving towards uh, the outcome of supporting black students and families. We also know that there can be more opportunity. So I want this entity to be enduring and have the ability to attract additional resources and ongoing capability 
to help us coordinate educational strategies over the long term. Um, and so with that said, I will share my screen here um, and show this proposed structure. We have shared this uh, last fall and then again, um, earlier this year when Governor Brown convened many of us to think about how the Tubman relocation fits into the, largest, the larger context of, of the Center for Black Excellence. And so with that, I'll walk you through a few of the important parts here, and then I'll ask steering committee members to weigh in before we uh, jump into discussion. So as you can see, the Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee described uh, consists of Albina Head Start, POIC, SEI, Black Parent Initiative, REAP, AVT, and Kairos. So this is the committee that's been meeting since uh, last May to think about this vision for making sure that Albina is a center for Black excellence. To be successful, we need to enter into an agreement with the school board that allows us to create an entity, which we are calling the CBE board. The role of the CBE board is to oversee all of the investments with PPS as the first uh, uh, jurisdictional partner so that together we can think about how Center for Black Student Excellence, Tubman, Jefferson, and so on fit together. We have been fundraising and expect to hire a Center for Black Excellence director that can look at the big picture for Albina but then we know that you are hiring a Center for Black Student Excellence Director whose job will be to coordinate within the internal me mechanisms of uh, Portland Public Schools to make sure that the plan for Center for Black Student Excellence is coordinated with Jeff, uh, with the educational strategies and the internal stakeholders that the district has. On the CBE side, we expect to use our uh, capacity as an independent entity to do additional fundraising. Um, to do community engagement in deeper ways, and then to think about all of the centers for Black excellence that will exist in Albina, starting with the Center for Black Student Excellence. Um, as I stop sharing my screen here, I'll ask Kali to come back and share more about how the Center for Black Student Excellence fits in with the vision for a relocated Tubman and the Jefferson modernization. So when we had discussed this initially, we had talked about wanting to ensure that we have a space that a physical built space that is co-located um, with Tubman and, and thinking about how that middle of the continuum um, creates this anchor for everything that goes out in either direction. So middle school down to, to young children and then middle school up through high school. And that we have this space um, in this tender age where we see kids are most vulnerable, that is a, a safe space for children and that can be a hub for organizations and the work of children and communities. Um, a lot of it is still to be determined. We are intentional in not wanting to develop it because we believe that community has to develop it. And it, there's a, a lot of different members of the community. There are different schools. We know that King Elementary, Boise Elliott, Boise Elliott, um, Humboldt Elementary, in addition to, to Cairo Cerny Academy are all schools sort of in the cluster and we want everyone to provide input into what this looks like. Um, but the idea is that uh, initially was the co-location of both um, recognizing that we needed to have something in the built environment as we try to show impact in all schools that serve black children. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kali. So before we open it up for questions, steering committee members, is there anything you would like to add to what Kali and I have shared? We just add that uh, in terms of location, some of that is still up in the air as well. I mean, I think what Kali shared in terms of the area being connected to Tubman, but we also uh, are in the midst of the whole redesign of Jefferson. So the option could be part of Tubman, if the, the Tubman site is close to Jefferson, but it could also potentially, and Khalid, you left our last meeting, we had quite a bit of conversation about the possibility of this being co-located 
on the Jefferson site as well. I don't think we have an overwhelming opinion about either. We just geographically, it just needs to be close. So we would be open to it being attached to Tubman, being attached to Jefferson as well. I appreciate that comment, Tony and and Kali. I, you know, as we've been in, uh, in conversations with uh, with your team, uh, what we've we've expressed is that uh, nothing is off the table. We, you know, we're committed to ensuring that uh, all of our uh, these school communities remain in the Albina community, uh, and that you know, and and part of the work that we need to do uh, di- uh, very dig- diligently is. Uh, look at trade-offs and and have uh, discussions about that. So uh, we uh, we are as staff are very uh, open. I mean, we're we're really looking at what is in, in the best interest of our community. So just want to just want to add that for, from our perspective. I just I wanted to add that um, we have a tremendous opportunity um, here um, to not repeat the mistakes of the past when it comes to our relationship, the black community's relationship with the school district, and that we have an opportunity to truly build something that is community centered. Um, And if we do that, it can change the trajectory of our relationship moving forward. So I just wanted to underscore that we're, we have an an, an incredible opportunity here uh, for collaboration. And I'm really hopeful that we're gonna move forward in a way um, that we have not in the past. Yeah, and I would just add, uh, Joe McFerrin, I would just add that uh, I'm feeling real optimistic about our work together. Um, I work with other school districts, as as many of you do as well, and, and other public entities. And in my years of experience, I've been a part of the district making an effort to deal with these issues. And so uh, I'm confident that the leaders of of PPS, board, staff, et cetera, will work with us to make this truly come to pass. Thank you, Joe. I want to um, jump in, Bahia. I really appreciate your optimism and uh, positivity because I'm feeling also optimistic. Um, You know, when we know better, we need to do better. And um, we do know better now, post-George Floyd, post-Black Lives Matter. Black lives still matter, always have. And I just, I feel hopeful about the um, potential to do things differently. Uh, We have a smart crew here. We've got people that have generations in this district. I also want to say we're hearing from community members from Jefferson High School, from Boise Elliott Humboldt, um, Harriet Tubman Middle School, and of course, King Elementary that want to be also engaged early in the process and not um, added on later. So I think it'd be important to have um, representation from all of those schools um, at the table. But um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to be part of this and uh, doing what I can to move this forward in a way that looks very different from how um, the district has engaged with uh, Black students and families in the past. So um, let's carry on. Let's get this done. That's great. And I, I just want to point out again, historically, um, we, we started with organizational Black-led organizations. And so I know that both POIC and Kairos run schools, but they're both nonprofits that are their own entities. And so we focused on the large serving Black orgs, SEI, POIC, Kairos, Albina Head Start, and, um, and BPI as a starting place with always an intention to include the school uh, leadership, both um, the parent leadership in particular, families. We really want to have family engagement. And then, of course, people, educators, uh, and leaders within the schools. But um, there was never any, I want to be clear, <laughs> there was never a desire to leave anyone out. I think for those of us who work outside of the system, um, working with children and families, it is hard to move things in community uh, without 
without having community voices. Sometimes when things start with schools, and I'm not saying this to be critical of PPS, but I think partnership with outside organizations and, and the school district have not always been the strongest thing. So we felt like we would start with nonprofits who are serving kids and families, many of whom are doing so in schools, and then also work with families um, and leadership within different schools in the community. So um, it's important to us as well. I just wanted to, to state sort of how it began. So I'd be interested in going back and just learning a little bit more about our sort of structure of our partnership. Um, when to maybe you want to go back to that slide, because um, the sort of challenging part is that we can't, one of the challenging parts <laughs> is that, you know, we're here to dream big together. Um, but for us on the PPS side, we also have um, a, a train that is moving, so to speak, with our impending uh, master planning of Jefferson High School and our need to um, arrive at a site for the relocation of Tubman. Um, so there are some, some chronological pieces that need to be addressed sooner rather than later. But we... we uh, we want to do that in community. We want to do that in partnership and we want to do that without um, obscuring any opportunities that may be there in the future by the decisions that we make in the present. Yeah, I appreciate that, Director Constam. And, you know, this is the um, most important message that we have for all of you is that we are prepared to move forward with this structure that allows us to consider both the short term opportunities and decision points, as well as the long term. But this uh, needs to be a board level uh, discussion because what we're asking for is shared governance in that decision making, recognizing that you have legal, you know, fiduciary responsibility over the bond dollars, but um, but we think that we can figure out how this new entity delivers recommendations to the PPS board so that that's preserved. Um, but what we don't want to do is be in a position of reacting short term to the decisions on each of these measures. So um, the, you know, I hope we can get to what questions need to be resolved so that the school board can vote on the agreements that are necessary to put this into place ASAP. I got it. And y'all forgive me. I'm, I'm kind of new to all of this, all this kind of stuff. So my, my questions may, they may have already been answered. Maybe somebody else already knows them. I, I don't know. So one of the things that has stood out to me about um, when we start talking about the Center for Black Excellence is that it seems to be um, being talked about from two different perspectives. So it seems that me to me that you've got one side that's talking about the Center for Black Excellence, and then you've got the other side, PPS, that's talking about the Center for Black Student Excellence, where there it seems that there's no there, there doesn't seem, again, to me, to be a lot of cohesion of these two things. In fact, that they're looked at as two separate, two separate things, trying to do two separate things. Like from PPS, we're looking at this as how are we going to make things better for students and student excellence and how we get it from that perspective. And then when I hear, um, when I hear you guys talking about it, I'm hearing like, we, yes, we're inclusive of the students, but we're talking about the black family nucleus, like the, you know, saying the, the whole thing. We want, um, you know, what I'm saying black generations to be to be better. And what we're doing is trying to create a, a pathway that will that we believe will get us not just that will address the student, but it will also address the family. So there seems to me, first off, that there is a disconnect between those two and responsibilities, like somebody is saying we're focusing on the kids and we're fo focusing on this. That may be, maybe I'm off. And if I am somebody, please tell me. The other piece is that the, the ownership aspect of it, like who owns it, right? And so if it, it sounds like from a PPS perspective, we're saying that we wanna make sure that we own the, we're doing student stuff. Like it's, and we, we're gonna own that. And then the community P aspect of it is saying, you know, we want this to be, um, a joint, a joint ownership where we, where we all, you know, said it's all owned, but we want there, we don't want there to be like PPS shouldn't be able to make decisions about it without, um, without the community involvement, right? And so 
Where is that at? And is that legally binding? Can we can we actually do that? And here's my concern. If if PPS in in six, seven years gets a wild hair up its butt and decides, you know what, um, black excellence is no longer my priority and PPS owns the this this center or whatever this is, then does that mean that PPS is going to be able to come back and say, well, you know what? We're, we're going in a different direction to coin a phrase that and PPS will use to want to get rid of anybody. We're going to go in a different direction. And so will they use that phrase? And then will the center of black excellence, will, will y'all be able to say, well, you know what? We thank y'all for your seed because the amount of money that we're talking about isn't in, it's really just seed money in, in reality. I mean, we're not talking about something that's going to build something substantial or create longevity this is actually like seed money in the grand scheme of things but is does that going to give like cde the center for black excellence say you know we thank you for your money we thank you for that drop in the bucket but now we're going to move on we're going to take our ball and go that type of situation how do we create something that says no we're one of the initial investors in this grand scheme of things. And therefore, as we move forward, we both have an obligation to one another that this is how it's going to go and that one can't do it without the other. Now, I'm done talking. I apologize that that's a long rant, but I don't know how to uh, paraphrase in such a manner with bullet points. So that's what I got. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm listening for. And so help me. So D- Director Green, uh, so uh, I think what I think you encapsulated a lot of the promise and some of the challenge of this. Um, I think under the superintendent's leadership, PPS has been trying to enter into a different relationship with community um, where we're really trying to break down the barrier, the false barrier between institution knows best versus community connected with expertise, uh, everyone's expertise knows best, and you can't, um, you can, the, the false sort of, uh, the, the false uh, dichotomy between those two is something that we're really trying to bridge. So I, as I understand it, what our, what our, what our partners are, are hoping to do is to not only, um, not only sort of have a great outcome, but also reimagine the way in which we work together um, to define partnership and uh, to, to define partnership in a way where community is leading and institutions, publicly funded institutions, are responsive to the needs that community is is bringing up, and that it's done in a in a in a slightly different way, um, where we're where where PPS hasn't in the past taken the expertise or the um, or even the lived experience of parents of community leaders, and to to really put those folks into the driver's seat in helping to drive decisions. So not being an afterthought, but really sort of being there in in decision-making. So I believe what we're trying to propose is some sort of agreement where the board in your leadership capacity um, works with community leaders. And there's a reason why we're, we're really excited about working with these particular community leaders, because, you know, the, the, the whole premise of culturally specific, of black led organizations isn't just in representation, which is vitally important, but is in that accountability to community, that there's a level of sort of, and I always talk about this, like grocery store accountability, where Tony, Bahia, Kali, all of these leaders can't go down the street without sort of being with and amongst folks that they're serving. And so that level of accountability is much different than than I myself as as an institutional uh, employee has in terms of my accountability to my boss, and to my boss's boss. So we're we're trying to sort of like merge uh, merge that into a, a place. And so with um, with our lawyers, I think we have to get to an MOU that outlines the board's sort of responsibility to this entity, um, as well as that that sort of talks about a, a deeper level of partnership, and then also sort of uh, leads the way for for staff to really re 
examine and recalibrate the way in which we work with with organizations. Um, and so I think that's the that's the challenge here. All of those things about like what will happen in the future, what will happen with funding, those sorts of things. I think we we probably need to solve those for sure. But I think in this instance, really what we're trying to do is change the mindset and change the operation um, so that it's we're redefining partnership in a way that that sort of recalibrates community accountability. I, I, that's a very uh, long-winded way of um, saying that the effort here is to codify the relationship. And which brings me to my question about, you know, the board changes every two years. So, and we're not, uh, we can't encumber future boards because we don't know who they will be and what their priorities will be. And so um, I'm wondering in that governance structure, if there's, if there's room to identify someone, I mean, the partners here on the call, I've known like since I was a child. So been around for decades, I'm looking at Tony and Joe and, and others on the call that have been doing the work in this community for a long time, but um, the board the board will change over time. And so, okay, fine. have we thought of um, have we thought about who who might uh, serve as who might serve as a community member that, along with partnering organizations, can kind of stay the course for this work, considering that it. it it won't be in two years, four years, six years, it'll build all the different boards. It doesn't have to be answered today, but it's just a question that's come up for me when I was looking at the, uh, the chart. Um, I wanted to say to that if, if, if we do have some sort of structure um, that, that you know, ab absolutely, I think um, is something institutionally um, we can commit to. Um, Obviously, I, I mean, my assumption is that's the reason why it's a would be a legally binding document um, that we agree to it. Um, I, I want to maybe just um, sort of go back to the very start of the conversation and just thank all the partners for um, participating both in the bond and also in the efforts to secure the funds for Harriet Tubman Middle School, because we wouldn't have we wouldn't have had those without our community members. Um, and I, I just look at, we passed the bond a year ago, well, 2020. And um, I'm really interested in accelerating the conversation of what the partnership looks like. Um, you know, I know the work um, at Jefferson is moving along and we have um, also um, a, a need to move uh, on Harriet Tubman. So I think, you know, diving deeper into what, like what, what that shared governance looks like um, and getting our questions answered is really an important thing to have happen um, sooner, sooner rather than later, um, because we have projects that are in flight that, um, you know, absolutely need to be informed by um, and um, built with, with the community. So I'd like to get more, a better understanding of what sort of the, um, what what shared governance would look like, um, so that we can um, move ahead. Because I'm 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 concerned that that projects get life lives to their own, and then um, they're moving, and um, it won't be informed by a shared governance um, structure if it happens, say, next year or six months from now. That's a great point. Um, it's it would also be my desire to. Um, get an agreement in place uh, with the partners on the on the call here. If y'all don't let Callie uh, talk, yeah, out, so now Callie been trying to talk for like ten minutes, and everybody else's voice is stronger than hers. So she has been so nice and been just been backing down, but I keep seeing it on my screen, and I just Callie, I'm, I'm going to shut up so that you can go. <laughs> and then yeah. Director and Green, um, Elaine Elaine also her has hand up. Eileen's hand has been up for a while as well. Yep. Yeah. So I just Elaine, actually, Dr. Want, oh. yeah, Director, thank you, Director Green. I actually just wanted to answer part of your question around the clarity of the two 
monikers of student success and um, Center for Black Excellence. I think somehow different language was used, but if you look back into when AVT and Kairos at the time presented the concept, there were three components to it. It was children, it was families, and it was educators that were the core pieces of the Center for Black Excellence. And I'm sure we can provide that original presentation to you so you can see where the concept started. And I think we're not so, they're not so different. I know they're being talked about in two different ways, uh, but the original concept was always about how do we support children, families, and the educators that are supporting them with the particular focus on Black educators and Black uh, administrators uh, within the space. So just wanted to give you that answer for your question. Eileen I think has it was Ms. Ms. Elaine next. Thank you, and Elaine, um, and then Gary, Director Hollins. And Elaine, you're still on mute. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, sorry. I didn't have my hand raised. I'm just pretty much listening. Thank you, though. Director Hollins. All right, thanks, everyone. Um, can everybody hear me? Because I'm on my phone. So I want to make sure everybody yes, can hear me. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Oh, not. Okay, so I want to kind of uh, speak on, you know, when we talk about the Center for Black Excellence and and I'm, with, and I'm with Herman, you know, for me, the two is confusing. One, you know, I think it, this should be one one thing going in one direction, um, just like how we're here together now to try to make it to where there is one table, not two separate tables trying to, trying to achieve the same thing. Um, it is duplication. Um, and I'm going to hit on with, um, with, with um, Danny um, Ledesma was speaking on, and as far as, you know, the direction um, and going under, you know, as far as the superintendent's um, guide, as far as how he wants to build with the community. Um, and I'm going to go a step further. Um, the, the board needs to direct um, the governance of how this is going to do. And then we will expect the superintendent to make sure that it followed through. Um, because this is a, a time and place right now that, you know, when we talk about being bold and audacious, um, that the board should be directing this. The board should be saying, you know what, this is where we want to go. This is how we want to go because we listen to our community. Some of us have grew up in this community. Um, some of us have been a part of these programs that we're talking about and we see the, the outcomes of those already. Um, and so we don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, vetting, you know, the, the, the merits of the group that is here. It's literally saying, okay, we, the board wants to make this the priority. We're going to make that the priority. And then the superintendent and staff uh, follow suit. Um, that's one way how I, I see it. Um, because we have a plethora of, of wealth and knowledge um, from the folks that are here. Um, that this, this, for me, it should be a no brainer, right? When we talk about the, the funding piece, well, the bond is temporary. Um, you know, once we spend the $60 million, that 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 money is gone. So we have to have an organization there that is responsible um, for this. Um, and to tag on with Director Green said, oh, the organization needs to be separate from PPS because as PPS changes, as administration changes, as board leadership changes, then we don't want we want to make sure that those priorities for the Center of Black Exit don't change. And so that is a core piece of how the governance needs to be set up that is supported by PPS, but not ran by PPS. And I wanna make sure I'm clear with everyone on the call to, 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 to understand that. Um, because, you know, there's only a few of us here that's gonna be buried at Rose City. And we wanna make sure that the generations that's coming behind us um, is going to be able to benefit from the decisions we make today. 
you know, and I don't necessarily look at it as being be, making another board beholden to to our decisions today, but I think it's our responsibility to make sure that we leave this in the right hands moving forward. And that should be our number one goal is to say, okay, you know what, how can we, the district, support the organization that's going to lead this? How do we as an organ as a, as PPS help finance and fund and help fundraise for the ongoing um, operations of this organization, but not to lead, not to own, and not to control. This is Tony. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, from my perspective, going back to the governance structure. <laughs> That's where I think this conversation needs to go back to, because I, I think what we are presenting here is a governance structure that will do all the things that we're talking about. I mean, it is shared leadership. <laughs> you know, it, it, it is shared control, which has never been done in the history of the district, <laughs> where you're going to allow a community to have equal voice uh, around the decisions, both now and forevermore. So I think we should just go back to the governance structure and see if there's any additional questions around that structure, because we think this structure says what everybody is asking for. And can, can, and can someone bring uh, that governance structure back up again so I can see that? I was just going to ask for the same. If somebody thanks. could share yeah. their screen. It's also in board book, but it might be nice to look at it together. And thanks, Tony, for, for that, uh, uh, bringing that full circle. Uh, so. As staff, we, you know, part of our uh, work ahead is to work with um, your leadership team, um, uh, your your team. Uh, you know, we, we've been in conversations with the Winta about what this looks like uh, uh, in in detail. So uh, we will be, you know, uh, working um, through the next few weeks to to draft something that really gives uh, meat to the bone here. Uh, that really, uh, you know, meets uh, our regulatory uh, requirements as a school district, but that still, you know, really commits to to that uh, to 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 being led by uh, our community and our community leaders. Um, and so, uh, I know that you know we one of the next steps here, uh, leaving this meeting, is to work to to identify a small work group of uh, that in, that will include a board member. Uh, staff members and um, from PPS and then uh, from your team to go through those details. So uh, that's an immediate so I, next step that's happening here. So I have a question on that, Jonathan. So are we going to be proposing some or are we going to be waiting for them to propose some? So I, I feel we should let them propose some to us and then we can kind of look at it and see, well, if this is going to work as far as the, the legalities of it um, versus us putting out the proposal. Um, that's one. Second thing, I, and this is just, I'm just throwing out stuff, you know, suggestions and stuff while I see this stuff on, on, on here. I see a CBE director and I see a CBSE director. Can that not be one and the same person um, to be able to help with that? And then whatever money that we are spending on the CBSC side be to help pay for that person as well. Um, it just seems like it's redundant because if we're talking about, you know, the CBSE piece, it's only going to be temporary until those funds are exhausted. Then the CBE director will be pretty much ongoing. Well, if we combine those funds now, then that person can have a longer, le like a le longevity in that position to get that stuff done. Yeah, I'll defer to uh, to Winta on uh, that's the last that second question. I would say from from our staff's perspective, uh, having someone internally coordinating uh, the the work um, to make sure that we're investing, you know, and and making uh, uh, true to our promise of the CBSC. Uh, I think we'll need a director, but you know, a, a full time staff member. But when to, I don't know if you want to speak to the hybrid model that he just mentioned. Sure. Um, you know, so Director Constam in the chat. Uh, said that this is about power sharing and I like that, but it's also about power growing. And so to uh, Director Green's question earlier about the focus on students versus families and communities, 
you know, these two positions work together to make sure that it's not either or, um, that the CBSE director is really in charge of coordinating with the internal PPS, uh, within the internal PPS system. The CBE director, you'll see the first gray rectangle is the creation of Centers for Black Excellence, which is the Center for Black Student Excellence. And so that's absolutely in their charge, but they're able to have a broader um, reach on, on coordinating with community organizations, fundraising for the broader uh, vision and so on. So uh, it's critical though that they both work together and then that they both report jointly to the CBE board, which consists of PPS board members, Center for Black Excellence Steering Committee members, and the superintendent. Thank you, Winta. Oh. And to, to address your second point, uh, Director Hollins, or your first uh, question, uh, you know, we'll, we're working out the details about, you know, uh, uh, you know, part of part of what we're working on is what does it look like to work in, in, in partnership and collaboration? We also recognize that, you know, uh, and, and I think Winta and, and, and your team recognize that our our staff here at PPS, namely, you know, some of our black leaders uh, across the organization, uh, our black educators will play a significant role uh, in, in, this, in this work. So we wanna make sure that, that as this governance structure really uh, comes to light and, and the work uh, really commences, that we too are elevating our black uh, staff uh, uh, and black educators to, to really play uh, a, a critical role uh, in this work. Jonathan, can I add one more point here? Um, so, you know, but I think Director Hollins, you're raising an important point about whether the Center for Black Student Excellence is ultimately PPS owned versus community owned. And that's exactly the question that we want to resolve on this new board. So I could see the phasing out of the CBSE director potentially, uh, and that being a community position long-term, I don't know, but the first step is establishing this board where we can address that very question. And Winta, I think that gets at my question in terms of longevity and having that through line. So having a solid connection. And I think that that could be done at that CBE board level where um, members exiting off of PPS would, there, there would always be someone from the board represented um, on that, on that board. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So we, it doesn't have to be a one and done. It can be a continuation of leadership uh, or representation. That's right. I mean, that is the commitment that we're asking this board to make is for a lasting commitment from PPS board specifically to be represented on an entity like this, uh, that has shared governance between board members and community members for the long term. So the the question I don't know that I heard um, when we're talking about creating this agreement is this, Jonathan, you mentioned that staff would come up with something. Is there any reason why we wouldn't have the steering committee draft something for the district to respond to um, and have it vetted legally? In, in other words, to flip the yeah, and, and I want to be clear, uh, staff is not proposing initiates, drafting words are used. Yeah, these concepts uh, are um, and, yeah, uh, and provide something for us to review or or respond to. Absolutely, uh, I want to be clear. Uh, staff is not <laughs> drafting this uh, agreement. Winta, do you want to speak to kind of what uh, we we propose working on together? Sure. Um, so you know, I mean, I want to point out that the CBE steering committee has been presenting this since last fall. And so we share your urgency in getting this in place ahead of these important decisions that are, um, that are in front of us. So what we're proposing at this point is a very, very small work group with one CBE member, one PPS board member, and the appropriate staff to get the agreements before you really as quickly as we can. And, um, as soon as May would be ideal, it may have to be June, but we're ready to move as fast as you are to get this in place. And so uh, part of what we want to hear in this work session is the questions that you have and um, additional points that we need to consider for incorporation for that agreement that we want to bring before you really quickly. 
And when to just to clarify that we are pr proposing this uh, the agreement to be built off of the governance structure that they see before them here today. Yes, thank you. I want to um, call on Amy, who's had her hand up for some time. Elaine, your hand is still up. I don't okay. know if you have a comment to add. And then also like to open the floor to hear uh, from people that we haven't heard from um, any questions you might have about what we're looking about the proposed governance structure. Thanks, Michelle. I just want to say what I will be looking for is really details under the scope of, of responsibility and decision making for that CBE board. Um, I think those are the really important um, points that we're going to have to get right. So I just look forward to seeing the detail on that. And then I also wanted to just bring it back to Kali's remarks at the beginning, because um, you know, when there was a dream for bringing all those services together at Earl Boyles, um, it was very complicated and it took a long time for all those things to come together and all those, you know, interagency, public and private partnerships to come together. And when you see it working as it does now, it seems like, well, of course we can deliver services this way. And this is what's in the best interest of children and it's working, but it was complex, but it's also a testament to the fact that we can do this and we can bring all all kinds of entities from our community together in service to what our kids need. And I think it's just a really apropos example. And it's it's really exciting to think what can we do in the in the heart of Albina. I guess um, to your point, I want to just recognize and appreciate that, you know, this is all new. Um, this idea of shared governance and shared leadership um, is new for the, for our district, and it's it's a new way of thinking about how to work together. And so, if it feels like putting on a new pair of shoes, it's not quite fitting well. Um, that might be we we might all be experiencing a little bit of that. Um, I don't think anybody here on the call has experience with um, shared governance and shared you know positive outcomes, particularly for Black kids in Portland. So. Um, I just want to just encourage all of us. It, it will be uncomfortable at times, um, uh, but we're, we're all pulling in the same direction. I think we all have share the vision um, and, and the bond passed and it's now implementation time. Um, again, I want to, ha has anybody um, other, my other colleagues that haven't, I haven't heard from have any questions or um, concerns or thoughts? Michelle, can I come? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Uh, well, let me just quickly say, we haven't heard from your legal counsel, but it sounds like all of us are kind of on the same page here. But my only concern is that from the legality standpoint, is there something that would preclude us from having this kind of shared opinion or not opinion, but a shared uh, voting rights, et cetera, et cetera. So I know I know your legal person is uh, is on this call. I mean, I, I'd hate for us to start going forward. And then, then at some point down the road, legal counsel jumps up and said, this ain't even possible. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, and I am here listening and learning a lot to help, you know, our, the job of, of lawyers is to help their clients achieve their goals. And so um, I, I think having this working group, the small working group, try to put the details and the, the scope and authority and decision making, and then we can test that against what the statutes will or won't allow. But I understand the charge. Um, so I can't give you a definitive uh, or even BPS a definitive answer today, but uh, I understand what we're trying to achieve and we'll, we need to make sure it's compliant and we'll work hard to, to do that. That's great. Uh, I'm, a, I'm also I'm a, a big fan of uh, challenging um, systems, especially legal systems, because if, if women wouldn't be voting and neither would black people, if, if there wasn't some challenge uh, presented. So uh, I appreciate so I, your I, thought. It sounds like we need to get something on drafted and then would the next step be to make sure that we're in compliance with state statutes i just got one thing to say and i gotta i gotta run um so i will be willing to be on that board um to get it started and i would love i'm, I'm always got a timeline so i would love to get a timeline you know by the end of next week or when we can convene um so we can get this thing moving Thank you, guys, everyone, and love to see everyone. Um, everybody have a great day. Thanks, Gary. Hi, Gary. 
And uh, if I may, I appreciate uh, Liz uh, Ewain in there. Um, uh, you know, we there are models that we are looking at uh, collectively uh, that Wint has shared that we that we've shared that we've seen across the country. Uh, you know, and so well, again, part of the work uh, ahead of us is this smaller working group where we can really uh, brainstorm and and really create you know uh, what what the vision is here um, uh, in service of our kids. So I have a, I have a question, and this is maybe for um, Keisha and the PPS staff on the Jefferson Project, and then also a question. Um, to the um, Center for Black Excellence Partners is, I, I'm not I'm not sure where we are um, precisely in the Jefferson process. I do know from our other rebuilds that um, decisions get locked in, and in order to meet the, the deadlines, and I, and I know um, that we, we want to um, meet our our commitment to rebuilding uh, Jefferson uh, on a specific timeline, and I'm I'm curious from this on the CBE side, whether there's anything, um, any decisions that have been made to date that um, uh, there's um, discussion about or um, uncertainty about. And, and then from the PPS side, um, you know, what, what flexibility we have, or, you know, are, is, is the um, process and the decisions that we've already made in order to, to rebuild Jefferson uh, by the timeline that we've committed to, um, you know, are, are we good with that? Or is there something that, you know, once we have a, this, you know, some sort of shared governance structure that we're going to have to reopen, open up that could delay the timeline? So I'll say that for, uh, for Jefferson, we um, literally are actually in the middle of sort of ideating our community engagement process right now. Um, as I'm hearing all of you guys speak today, I really would like to offer up again that collaboration. Um, our um, subconsultant on our community engagement subconsultant um, on the job is um, uh, really eager to um, help uh, out with uh, PPS growing and um, sort of learning new ways to engage with the community. So um, I think I'll pass it to Dan so he can comment further. Thank you, Keisha. Yeah, I'll be brief. You know, we, we are in the master planning process. Uh, the master plan uh, does come to the board for approval. During that process, you know, we, of course, coordinate with uh, the general community with the school and dozens of stakeholders throughout master planning and design. So there is certainly opportunity to incorporate uh, necessary physical facility accommodations uh, as the, the planning and the design progresses. Director Broom Edwards from the steering committee perspective, um, you know, there is a potential, uh, I don't want to call it a conflict point, but a timeline that we're aware of. So uh, in the letter that we sent to you um, in regards to the Tubman relocation, what we pointed out as being important to us is that the new, that one, there be a brand new middle school and two, that it be located in Albina. One of the potential sites that we have in mind is the lot across from Jeff. And I don't think we need to go into the locations right now, other than to point out that the timeline for the Jeff modernization um, might impact the ability to use that lot. So those are the kinds of issues that I think the work group needs to work through um, to realign the timelines uh, and get the structure in place. And, and just, to, just to double down on that, I made the comment earlier about you know, uh, as a as a collaborative, really thinking about trade offs, right? So, um, you know, we we know what what our values are and our commitments are, and and then we you know looking at constraints and the reality. So, just wanting you know in full transparency and full and full uh, uh, partnership, really uh, talk through those those challenges and 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 what that means for each other, right? So, but absolutely, those those conversations are on the table, understanding that that we have. Uh, uh, constraints along the way.
just from my perspective as an individual board meeting, and I really um, appreciate uh, Director Holland's uh, raising his hand for that work group. It seems that the sooner we can um, get something to either react to or build together, um, the, the better, because, um, for example, the board votes on a master plan for Jefferson that is in conflict potentially with um, other um, work streams and um, and projects within the, the larger umbrella that um, it will be hard to, it will be much harder um, to un either unwind or change them once we've worked um, worked that out. So the sooner that we can, you know, dive into the the, the details of what it looks like, um, the, the better. I wonder if we might um, put together a timeline of activities because that master planning is gonna be one point, but site selection is gonna be another. And I think there, there's, there are obviously gonna be multiple decision points that may conflict with others. So I'm wondering if uh, um, we could, I'm, I'm looking at Dan, Dan's team, um, if, if there's a, if it's possible to get some daylight into what needs to happen, like a, it doesn't have to be like a project plan, but a timeline of activities and some of those dependencies yeah. identified. Chair to pass, we we uh, have actually been uh, working on looking, you know, working on that, so we know that there are, you know, major projects again, half a million, half a billion, or half a billion dollars, and so wanting to make sure that folks have an understanding of what the Jefferson uh, timeline looks like in, in uh, aligned to the Harriet Tubman uh, relocation to, uh, you know, to some of the other uh, discussions. So yes, we we plan on on sharing that and making that public. Uh, for for you and, and our broader community, so that we understand again how are all of these uh, timelines and dollars working together to advance Black excellence at PPS. Thank you, Jonathan. Ch Chair DePass. Uh, yes. Um, if I just I hear a few things that I think are relevant to the timeline question. It seems that we have agreement that what Winta shared today, that we can use that as a baseline to build a proposal that the board can react to. The purpose or the goal is to do so by before the end of May. Um, there has been a request to meet within the next week or at least that meeting in the next week. So I feel like there are some concrete steps. We have a sense of what we're building from. We have a sense of trying to get something done before June. Um, and I think the only uh, checkpoint is the Jefferson rebuild and making sure that we're doing that ahead of um, when they vote on, on Jefferson so that there is no conflict between what we propose and what, what Jefferson is proposing. So that feels like three very concrete ways to move forward coming out of this conversation, if you if you agree. <laughs> and, and we have a volunteer, importantly, from the board, which is great. Um, thank you. Jackson, did you want to go ahead? Yeah, not to get off the topic of the timeline, but I just wanted to share that um, for the Center for Black Student Excellence, that's probably all gonna be 100% for students. I'd like to see some more student involvement in that, especially since if we're trying to enhance the experience of black students, we should be getting input from black students on how best to do that. And same for the CBE side, at least some of that will be to the benefit of students. I would love to see more involvement from students, maybe even on the steering committee. Do we have any other comments or questions about where we're, um, what our planning, what our work plan is, what our way forward is? Is there anybody that hasn't spoken that has a burning question or concern? Um, Michelle, this is Andrew. It's not a burning question or concern at all. It's actually just to throw my support behind this. I'm excited about the conversation. To be really frank, I it never occurred to me we wouldn't be sharing power on, on this project. So actually seeing this governance structure laid out, it makes total sense and is consistent with what I imagined. Um, and, you know, I think it's incumbent on us as 
board and, and actually it's a community to understand that co-creation takes time and, and balancing that with the sort of need to also move forward quickly on these things and balance our own projects against the need to co-create. But I, I, I'm really confident we can do it. And the other thing I would do is just encourage staff um, as you're going through these agreements to find ways around any statutory issues. Uh, Liz is going to mostly fall in your lap, but, you know, um, I, I have, you know, done some of this work with other governments and, you know, it, it, you can sometimes run up, I think, Michelle, you said it, you know, you can run up against these, these old laws or statutes, there are usually creative ways that that we, you know, as a board can sort of act to to, to get around any of those to make sure that we, we truly are engaged in a, in, a, in a power sharing arrangement. So um, I'm supportive and excited about the conversation. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Director, uh, Director Scott, uh, Chair DePass, or uh, Vice Chair Scott, uh, Chair DePass, I think from our from staff's perspective, one of the things, you know, when the decision doesn't need to be made here in public, uh, but uh, want to uh, have make sure that you as chair and our vice chair um, identify a board member that will work will be part of this working group. Uh, so I will defer to uh, board leadership. Uh, and again, from our staff's perspective, we've identified our team uh, that will uh, move forward uh, in a, a steadfast commitment to to making this happen uh, in partnership with with Winta and and the rest of the team. That's excellent. I mean, we have a volunteer um, from our board, um, but uh, maybe we can discuss this at our check-in on Friday. I'm sure, I know that Gary has um, volunteered himself. I, I know I'm, I'll throw my name in the hat as well so that, um, you know, if Gary can't make a meeting, I can. Um, but this, I believe that this is extremely important to us and that we, the focus remains as we're doing all of this with the, with the governance piece, that the focus remains speaking back to some of the, um, one of the things that Michelle said earlier in that the board will change. That there's no question there. The board is going to change. And when it does, we wanna make sure that what we put in, um, in place are, are values that will not change and that they will, they will go with the community and that that's what makes them sustainable. And I would, I would add this, you know, we're, we're living in a society where everybody likes to have the talk about the conversation of shared power and shared authority until it's their power and their authority that they have to share. Then it's like, whoa, 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 slow down a little bit, you know, <laughs> because then it comes back to the what about me? And, you know, saying, and, and what, what am I going to do? I think if we're really looking at this. We, we get away from the what about me? and start realizing that we're in the positions that we are because we're, we've are we been called to serve a community. So it's not even my voice that matters. It's the voice of the community that I'm called to serve. And it's about what the community needs versus what I want. And th those are two different conversations. And so if our focus is based on what the community needs, I believe we would all agree that having something that is that is led by the community, that is for the community, and that will benefit the community, um, be in the hands of our community, and those capable of doing what I'm not going to do is, is extremely, uh, I, is, is the direction that we need to be going in. So from a litigation perspective, um, speaking to what Andrew said earlier to our attorneys, Liz, there's a way. There's there's something out there and there's going to be something that says what we shouldn't do and what we can't do and why this isn't the you know, I'm saying why this wouldn't be the best move. So my perspective as the board member is to say, figure out a way where there's a will, there's a way. Find a way to make it happen so that the community can own this versus the, the school district or that it's that this a joint collaboration where both parties have to have equal equal voting rights and it can't be one or the other because I do not want to entertain a conversation where the um, the school district gets to come in and say that black excellence is no longer a priority and that we want to move to something different. I want to I want to dismiss that with every fiber of my being. So if if the district has to hold it, and this is nothing to do with the district staff, nothing to do with the, our, our superintendent or his chief of staff or any of those, because I believe that they all want the same thing that we want, but one day they're going to leave us the same way the board is. And if it's no longer a priority for the next person coming in, then we lost. 
I don't want us to put our community in a position as to where they get something beautiful and then somebody changes their mind and we lose because that's what happens to us time and time again. People set us up. We start feeling good about the direction that we're going in. We start loving it. And then somebody else comes in, you know what I'm saying? They're like, I don't even like that no more. And then our community loses. And while I'm here, I got to set us up to win. So Liz, whatever you got to do, find, find the black community a win. Figure it out. Have a send me down to Salem to write a new law. I don't care. Find us a win. That's all I'm saying. And I'm gonna stop talking. Thank you. Um, you were you're being awfully quiet. I was I was concerned about you. <laughs> I appreciate your thoughts. Um, I think you're saying that we want to, you know, what we create um, in the next five weeks. It sounds like, or six weeks, or eight weeks, or whatever, as soon as possible is got to be sustainable into the future. Uh, so something, if we think out generations um, and keeping those future generations in mind will serve us well. Um, I don't think there, I don't, if, if there, oh yes, uh, superintendent. Thank you uh, with your permission. Um, and, and if I could just humbly offer uh, maybe a couple of remarks uh, to bookend nicely what Kali opened us with and, and what I've been hearing the others uh, uh, remark on, uh, including uh, Preacher Green over here. Um, I, I, I've been from the very get go, you know, we, we are on the same hymnal when it comes to the effort uh, is about ensuring children, youth and families in Albina in particular, have the opportunity and the guarantee to thrive. Um, and we know that the school's sphere of influence on this is one slice and that this effort could never be accomplished without the direct impact and direction setting of the community. And I've gotten to know all of you on the screen here uh, and, and your commitment is, is everlasting here because you're right, the elected officials, the administrators, you know, will, will come and go. Um, and so how do we set uh, a, a direction that will that will serve in perpetuity because we're not going to accomplish the goal in in a year, uh, but we can start off now, uh, and it particularly as I think about my team sort of bringing to fruition or closing a few big work strands, you know, for us to really dive in. Uh, I mean, I'm a pragmatic person, so I like to talk very practically about, uh, you know, the, those to do's that I just heard. Uh, shared, uh, really start moving on those. Uh, I, I don't hear anybody protesting in concept what needs to be accomplished here. So uh, I really would like to see us uh, moving forward in, in some concrete ways. And there's a few newer members of my administration, including Deputy Proctor here on the screen. And, you know, as we talk about our charge uh, and, and that set for us by, by our bosses who are all here um, around what our goals, you know, remain, uh, to be, you know, this 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 is an integral part of that effort, and so uh, it, it involves an entire systemic approach and response. Uh, so uh, I see, I, I I'm committing and pledging that you know we'll we'll start to turn much of our attention, uh, a good portion of it, uh, towards this effort. And um, uh, you know, we've heard about this proposed structure in the fall again recently, and again today. Um, and, and I don't, I don't want sort of the perfect scheme to get in the way of start doing some good work and continuing the dialogue, uh, moving forward. I, I, I do believe those things sort of will sort themselves out. So, um, I just wanted to say that, um, I haven't heard anybody say that we want to do better by our black schools in Albina. So, uh, let, let's, let's, let's start sort of making some of these things real is, is my only sort of motivation. And I'm very conscious of the timelines because I know Dan's you know, uh, got to build some schools. So l these conversations are really important right now to make sure they integrate, you not just a location, but sort of what those facilities need to be supportive of in the way of a hub, uh, uh, both in the, in the, in the, in the location and the approach of what we're trying to accomplish here. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you for your comments. I, I, um, can't commit the board. Um, but I'm just personally, um, very much in support of the, um, proposed structure, as long as we massage it and work out those details. Um, you have my commitment to um, doing what I can to further the, um, the project, uh, the governance structure, 
really exciting to be working um, in partnership with everyone on the call. That's been, I know you've been doing this for decades. Um, and it looks like, uh, Julia, you have your hand up and then Winta. Just, just from a practical standpoint, um, uh, just the board has to do its business uh, in public meetings. And I'm wondering if um, we could have some sort of a commitment that uh, at, say, uh, one of our two board meetings in May, um, that we bring um, a the shared governance document to the, the board for uh, adoption, um, just so that we have sort of a pin a pinpoint in, um, and then we can back map from there of getting it it done, so that we don't you know, in, enter into the summer months um, without having um, sort of codified what what I what I hear to be a general conceptual agreement on an approach going forward. Yes, the commitment has has been that when that the board would vote on this, so that would happen in a public meeting. I guess what I'm suggesting is look, that's and doesn't need to happen right now, but um, subsequent to the call, um, which board meeting that would happen so we could back back map from from there. Got so it. Yeah, I'm we will back. Okay. I'll take that under advisement um, for our agenda setting, and I'm going to request that it's in our first meeting in June, uh, because I'll, I'll be out of the country in May and would like to be there for that vote. Looking at the time, we have seven minutes. I would love to give you your seven minutes back to do whatever you need to do uh, before for lunch. We're actually into the lunch hour. Um, if we have any final comments, um, and if not, we'll, we'll adjourn this meeting today. Thank you, Winta, uh, for, for your work here and the steering committee members for your commitment to um, seeing this future for our kids. I'm uh, really excited that my grandkids, I hope, will uh, be able to benefit from the work that we're doing today. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. It was a pleasure.